Hi, this is Trisha from Lemon Paper Lab. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use my Photoshop actions for repeating an object around a circle. These actions are available to purchase in my Etsy shop, and I will leave a link to it in the description below. Next, I will show you how to load them into Photoshop. First off, you're going to need to open a new file. So let's go ahead and click on File New. These actions are designed to work with a file size of 1200 pixels by 1200 pixels. If you're working with a design document that is a different size and you want to rotate an object, just make sure you open a separate document that is 1200 pixels by 1200 pixels, create your repeated object, and then you can easily bring it back in to your original document. So. With our file size set here, we're gonna uncheck artboards. I just have my resolution set to 300 pixels per inch, color mode is RGB color, and then background content set to transparent, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and click on create. To bring in the actions, you wanna make sure your actions panels is open, so you'll find that under windows, and then select actions. Here I have my actions panel, it's currently empty. I'm gonna go ahead and load my actions. So you'll click on this icon here and then you'll want to click to load actions. Go ahead and navigate to your downloaded file and you'll find a file that's titled repeated object around circle with a .atn for actions and then just click to open. And then what you'll notice is the actions are loaded here. If you click this drop down arrow, you'll see all of the actions here. Okay, now that we have our actions loaded, let's go ahead and test these actions. So I'm going to bring up a grid. So I'm going to go to view new guide layout and I'm just going to go two columns by two rows, uh, clicking on OK, and then that's just going to mark my center point here. Next, I'm going to uh, create a simple circle. So I'm going to use the circle tool, ellipse tool here. And then I'm just going to uh, change my defaults back to black by hitting D here. And then I'm just going to drag out a circle, shift click, and then just drag it out here. And then I'm going to put the space bar and then just orient it uh, to the center there. And we have our circle accessing the move tool here V on the keyboard. So with this object, you can center it or you can have it positioned somewhere um, that isn't center. And then what the action will do is it will repeat it around the center point of this document and creating the object around the circle. So I'm just going to align it here to the center. Uh, let's go ahead and just lock that or bring that to the bottom there. And then let's try out our let's create a flower so we'll go rotate repeat five selecting it here and then you can just click play and then it will automatically rotate that object around the circle five times so let's click into our layers panel and see what we have here so what this action does is it preserves your original but then it also creates a group so and then if you drop down into this group here, you'll see a duplicate of the original and then you'll see repeating five times here. I grouped it this way. So if you just, so if you decide that that's not quite what you're going for, you can easily turn it off or you can easily delete it. Um, you'll click on the trash can icon here and just click group and contents. And then you're back to square one. You can try, Moving it again, say, oh, I want it a little bit further away from center. Uh, let's repeat it again five times. And then you have it there again as well. So that's just a demonstration of what the actions do here. So let's go ahead and delete that again. Group and contents. And then with actions, you can also use it in button mode. So we're going to click on this icon here and select button mode. And then you'll see these actions here as well and you can just click on it so say we want to repeat it six times this time you can click on the button and it just automatically does it for you there 
Okay, let's go ahead and delete that one here and then let's go ahead and try another shape. So let's just turn that one off. We'll select a new layer here. Uh, going to our shapes tool, right click. Let's try the uh, polygon tool and let's create a star. Clicking on the icon here, we're gonna see that our star ratio is set at 50% and then we are going to do uh, five points here and, and then we'll just click and drag to create our star here. Accessing the move tool V, I'm just gonna center it. Again, you don't have to center it on your canvas, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and do that here. Okay. Uh, jumping back over into my layers panel here. Uh, one thing I recommend is converting your object into a smart object first. So I have my star here. I'm gonna go ahead and just duplicate this layer, Command J, I'm gonna turn this off just so we have it later. And then with this one, I'm going to uh, convert this to a smart object. So I'm gonna right click, convert to smart object. And then let's go ahead and repeat this. Let's try re repeating it 15 times here and see how it looks. So now we have our star repeated uh, 15 times. Let's actually go, um, I want them a little bit closer together. So let's try 18 times. So let's delete that again. So we'll click on repeat 18 and now we have our star closer. So now we have our group here. We have our original. Let's click into our smart object. We decided that a uh, star was maybe a little bit too large. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, scale this down. So I'm gonna go uh, command T and then we'll just click on this um, icon here so that they'll scale together. And then let's scale it down about 10%. So we'll just click on 90% there, selecting OK. And then I'm gonna save this, Command S, Command W to close it. And now it's a little bit further apart. By using the smart object, you can make changes to each one of these repeats um, at the same time because they were duplicates of that original smart object. So you decide, I don't really like this star, so you can go back in and then we can turn this off. Maybe we try um, a different, uh, uh, maybe we try a different star here. I'm gonna zoom in command plus here. We can turn off our guides, clear canvas guides here. And then uh, this time I'm gonna set my smooth ratio to say a 75%. Uh, click and drag, and then we have a slightly different star here. Um, just V to move it, and then we'll uh, just align it here a little bit in the middle, and then clicking on OK, and then let's save that Command or Control S, Command or Control W, and now you have a different repeating star um, because you used a smart object. Let's go ahead and jump back over into the layers. So uh, we can turn this group off. Uh, let's turn this star off as well. We'll just add a new layer because we're gonna work with a different shaped object. So uh, this time let's do a rectangle. So I'm gonna access the marquee tool. I'm just gonna draw out a rectangle here and then I'm gonna fill it with pixels, just option delete for Mac users and then Command or Control D to deselect and then V just to move it. Let's just align it here to the center. Okay. I also want to point out that there are instances where you may want to create a smart object that's bigger than your original item. So before when we did it with our star, we'll open up our star here again. When you originally save a smart object, the smart object is saved to uh, the ratio of your object. And so if you want to scale down, that's easy. If you wanna scale up, it's not as easy because you are constrained by your canvas size. We'll go ahead and close that there. So there might be instances where you want to save a smart object larger. So I'm just gonna draw another uh, rectangle using the marquee tool here. I'm just gonna draw it bigger uh, than my rectangle here. Um, and then we'll just fill it with pixels. Let's just select a new layer, option delete here, I'm bringing it below. Um, let's give it a different color. So let's go, instead of option delete, um, we have this layer selected, I'm gonna lock icon. 
Um, so I just fill the pixels here. Um, this time I'm going to go Command Delete for Mac users, which will fill it with our background color. In this case, is white. So we have um, Command or Control D to deselect here. So we have our uh, white layer here, and then we have our small rectangle. I'm going to click on both of these layers, right click, convert to smart object. So now we have our smart object here and let's go ahead and rotate it. Let's try repeating it uh, 10 times here. Um, currently we see the white, so we're gonna turn that off in our smart object. So I will double click on this layer. We'll hide that layer, Command or Control S to save, Command or Control W to close out. And we have our object here. And then we look at it and we decide that uh, maybe we wanna make it a little bit thicker. So we'll click back over. And we saved our smart object larger, which will allow us to scale this up now. So let's go Command or Control T. We still have this object selected. And then let's go ahead and scale it up, maybe 125% here. Clicking on OK, Command or Control S, Command or Control W. And now we have it a little bit thicker there. Uh, once you decide that you like your object, you can click on this group, you can right click, and then you can say uh, merge group if you'd like, and then it will just create a flattened version here. Let's go ahead and turn off our original, and then let's go ahead and turn off our guides as well so we can see a little bit. So we'll go view clear canvas guides. We have our object here. I'm just going to convert it to a smart object. And then we are going to do filter distort and then let's just twirl it and then down here at the slider you can change how much it twirls if you'd like and then let's just click on OK to see how it looks. So we have this basic shape and then I'm going to create a circle so I'm going to select a new layer, um, access my ellipse tool here, I'm going to drag out a circle and then just space bar if I want to uh, position it more towards the center here. Let's go um, about right there. Uh, v for the move tool, and then I'm just gonna align it to the center here. With our ellipse selected, I'm going to uh, click on this icon, command click here, and then clicking on this group layer. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this layer. And then we'll just turn this one off. And then this one we are going to just rasterize so we can uh, make changes to it. With this layer selected, I'm gonna switch over to the Marquee tool. I'm going to right click, layer by a cut, and then let's go ahead and turn off this and turn off our circle, and we have this kind of fun shape here as well. So, so this is just a, uh, just a fun shape created uh, that we used with our actions of repeating an object around a circle. We did it for a star, we did it for a circle, and then we also did it for uh, this rectangle, which we made into this kind of fun spiral. Now that I have uh, this fun shape here, I'm gonna go ahead and create a pattern out of it. So in my actions panel here, I'm gonna load up my uh, pattern design actions. These are also available in my Etsy shop. So I'm gonna click on the icon here. I'm going to uh, scroll down. I already have those actions loaded in. So I'm just gonna select pattern design here. And then I'm gonna switch from button mode here, collapse these down, and then I like to have my these actions above the other. So I'm gonna switch back over to button mode. And so now I have my uh, pattern design actions here, and then I have my rotation actions here as well. So clicking, we have this layer selected. I'm going to uh, bring it to the four corners here, which makes it a quick, easy uh, repeat here. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out. Command minus key, and then I'm going to turn the pattern preview on just so we can see how it looks. And then with this middle object here, maybe we uh, flip it. So let's try flipping it horizontal. So now it's going in the opposite direction. And then we can define our pattern here with this action to find a pattern. We see it in our patterns panel here. If you don't have your patterns pattern open, you can find it under Windows Patterns.
So we have our new action here, and then I'm going to go into create a new document file, new. Uh, this time I'm going to use the dimensions of 3600 pixels by 3600 pixels, just clicking create. And then I've got an action just to test this here. Clicking on this pattern fill layer, we'll select our action here. And then we have uh, the option to uh, change out the colors. So selecting on this color fill layer, we'll just try maybe a green, maybe a little bit darker one here. And you can create kind of a fun two-tone effect that way. And then just clicking on the pattern layer, let's go ahead and scale it down a little bit. Um, let's try 75%. Uh, just to get a little bit smaller there and now I have a fun uh, digital paper or a uh, pattern here that I can use. Thank you for watching this video on how to um, easily repeat an object around a circle using um, the actions that I've created. You can uh, purchase these actions in my Etsy shop. And then I also demonstrated uh, with one of the objects using my action set for pattern design, how we can quickly uh, create a pattern from those objects. In the description below, I will leave a link to uh, both of the, these action sets that you can purchase uh, from my Etsy shop. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment below. Thank you for watching my videos. I really appreciate it. I have fun showing you um, how to create patterns in Adobe Photoshop. Be sure to check out my other uh, pattern tutorials. This is Trisha from Lemon Paper Lab. See you next time.